It's time for local stories from across the East. Local food. Local fashion. Local businesses. This is your home for local. This is the East's Daily Download on Eastern North Carolina CW. Hello and welcome to the East Daily Download. My name is Mark and I'll be your tour guide on this adventure across the East. It's Thursday, one day closer to the weekend. Hope your day's off to a great start so far and boy do we have a big show in store for you today. It's the continuation of Premiere Week on CW. Tonight at 8 and 9 we have the premieres of Supernatural 15th and final season as well as Legacies. Supernatural Legacies, don't forget it tonight beginning at 8 on Eastern North Carolina CW. Now that's a lot, but let me also tell you you can find this show. You can watch us almost any time and any place now. We're at WNCT.com under the East Daily Download tab. Also Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And use the hashtag East Daily Download. Also, you can go to the WNCT mobile app, download the mobile app, and watch the show on that. It's awesome. You can watch us anywhere. Okay, now that's a lot of information, but I have even more information. This is what's on this morning's show. We're going to try out some aerial yoga with our Kelsey O'Donnell. Tomorrow, the new Breaking Bad movie, El Camino, is released on Netflix, and we've got the preview for you. We have part four of our look at Cycle NC's trek across the East during Mountains to Coast. And if all that wasn't enough, our 10 p.m. anchor, Angie Casada, is here with a very special edition of A Loving Home. Let's take a look. One of my favorite authors says we belong to each other, um, and I think as a as humanity and as humankind, we belong to each other. Like we, we take care of each other, we attach to each other, just even saying hello to the person at the supermarket, like you're forming that small attachment. Heather Powers has been fostering for almost 10 years now with her husband Lawrence, even adopted a young boy. So she knows firsthand the power of attachments in this process. And I couldn't imagine my life without those attachments and how much they've enriched me and made me who I am. The power of building that bond can sometimes be taken for granted. And throughout this A Loving Home series, after meeting families who were fostering kids and those who have adopted, I've learned that building attachments with these children is valuable to their future. You can never get those back, those ones that they lost, but you can build new ones and, um, and teaching them to trust, you know, and you have to discipline and you have to reward and you have to go through all the same things you do with biological. Sarah Golden also knows from experience after adopting two girls. Once that stability is there, the attachment just happens. I decided to do even more research and according to the Encyclopedia of Early Childhood Development, studies show that young children and teens rely on the attachments they make as they get older. They're better able to control their emotions in stressful situations and overall they develop better social skills bringing a child into your home um, and letting them form an attachment. And even if it's for a short period of time, um, even if you're just kind of like a small step along the journey, maybe in that time frame, you showed a kid what um, maybe a, a stable home looks like, what a peaceful sleep, a restful sleep looks like. Um, maybe you inspired them to understand you can go to college and you can be what you want to be and do the things that you would like to do. Maybe in that moment you just inspired them to, to just say hello to a stranger. Um, it's, it's small victories and small steps for children. Bottom line, you can make a difference. Whether it's short-term stay or permanent adoption, your attachment and what you have to offer matters. They're the future, they're the present, and for, for them to be empowered and to do things themselves, we have to allow that, but we have to let them attach to us. We have to put aside our fears on it um, and our worries because we are already attached to things and to people and stuff, so let's allow a, a child an opportunity to do that. Welcome to the end. If we win this, we're free. Hey, Casper! That looks like a woman white. We sent her to hell years ago. She could be back now. If she's back, then they'd all be back. <laughs> It's just us. You and me versus every soul in hell. I like those odds. We got work to do.
If your business would like to be featured in our new show, The East Daily Download, contact Joel Bullard at 252-355-8520 or jbullard at wnct.com today and watch The East Daily Download weekdays at 7 on Eastern North Carolina CW. Hey, we're back here on East Daily Download. It is Thursday, which means premiere day, Supernatural, the final season, 8 o'clock tonight, Eastern North Carolina CW. As it is written, so shall it end. Okay, we still have a lot to come. We're going to check in with Aerial Yoga, Kelsey O'Donnell, and actually Anissa and Bryce went out there and did some Aerial Yoga. Was it fun? Yeah. Yes, it was fun apparently. Okay, we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, also, right now, Cycle NC came through Greenville recently, and we caught up with them to talk about the event. Let's take a look. Uh, my name is Paul Sheehan, and I'm the Director of Sports Development for the Greenville Pitt County Sports Commission. A lot of planning and prep went into to making this event possible. We've been working with uh, several city and Pitt County departments uh, since January. Um, we've worked with just about every city department. Parks and Rec is obviously the huge one as I stand here in Town Common. So we've been working on this. We've had some local cy cycling advocates that have been working on getting it here for about uh, 15 years. Um, and our, our office, a woman in our office, has really been pushing hard to get this here for the past five years. Um, and coordinating with North Carolina Amateur Sports, who puts on Cycle North Carolina, um, we worked with them and they were looking for, for cities that they'd never been to before. Um, and it was kind of this big empty spot on the map of we can't, nobody could believe they'd never been to Greenville in the 20 year history of the event. We, we worked with them and we helped them with the route development through Pitt County. Um, and Greenville is kind of the, the champion of Pitt County being the overnight stop tonight. We're looking at routes that are um, safe for cyclists is, is the number one thing. So we're looking for routes that are high, high traveled is actually good for cyclists, but not congested. Um, so we worked with, uh, with, with a local cyclist as well as the police department and public works on determining which route through, through Pitt County and through the city of Greenville especially, um, negotiating football game day traffic, um, as well as um, just general Greenville five o'clock traffic, um, trying to figure out which, the, which route would be the safest. And we worked with the Cycle North Carolina route director, um, and we came up with, the, with a really great route that a lot of cyclists have said they really, really enjoyed. So we've been working with a lot of the, the uptown businesses and uptown Greenville specifically, since those are the businesses that are within walking distance. Um, but we've, you know, we've prepared them, we, we've worked with them, and this is, this is huge for them. Um, because all of these cyclists, they're going to go out, they're going to eat dinner. They're going to go out, they're going to uh, find somewhere to go to drink. They're going to, on a hot day like today, they're going to find somewhere and find a place to sit in the air conditioning. Um, and these are the people that love North Carolina. A lot of these people haven't been to Greenville or Pitt County before, and they choose their favorite stop along the ride to come back to. So not only is this a one-time impact for these businesses, we're also expecting to see a lot of return travel uh, for Greenville and Pitt County in general. Five years ago, there really wasn't much going on. Vacant buildings everywhere. It's just growing a lot, and I love just the feel of this area. I love being a part of just the change that's happening. The energy here, you can just feel it. Everybody supports each other. The activity has surpassed sort of what we thought it would happen in the first five years. And there's more coming, by the way. I think it's going to continue to grow. We have other businesses that are planning to open up very soon, and just I think there's just going to be more and more. Mark Woodson has owned and operated his own businesses for his entire professional life and knows how important community support is when you're just getting started. And quite often we become creatures of habit. We, you know, we continue to go to the same people we go to, we maybe go to the same people our parents went to, as opposed to looking beyond that. Woodson and other business owners are all participating in Minority Enterprise Development Week, also known as MedWeek. It's a chance to highlight the impacts of local minority-owned businesses and help them grow. As they grow, so does our economy grow. 
because a lot of these businesses are the backbone of our society. Um, they are the, our neighbors, our friends, so make sure that they have access to all the benefits and all the resources that we have available, make sure that everybody grows. The week features discussions, networking lunches, and opportunities for business owners to exchange ideas. Bernard is a large segment of this city. We represent a third of the population. And because we're a third, you know, we need to have a comparable presence in the business community. But some say one week isn't enough. What services do we provide to them on an ongoing basis? How can we help them throughout the year? What financial support can we give them? What other education or knowledge-based support can we give these individuals? This isn't the story I expected to be telling. Three years ago, when Batman mysteriously disappeared, he divided Gotham. Crows represent order, security. The crows are not the hero of this story, Gotham. I want to take power. I need you to fix his suit. The suit is literal perfection. It will be when it fits a woman. Welcome back to the East Daily Download here on Eastern North Carolina CW. Quick reminder, you can find us at WNCT.com under the East Daily Download tab. Also, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Use the East Daily Download hashtag. We'd love to hear from you. Follow us, like us. We like you, you like us. It's a great thing. Also, we're on the mobile app, WNCT's mobile app. Scroll down right there, East Daily Download. You can watch the show anywhere. Okay, still to come, aerial yoga. Anissa Bryce and Kelsey O'Donnell all went out and did this. They said it was a lot of fun. We're going to see that shortly. But right now, let's take a look at the trailer and the preview for tomorrow's premiere of El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie on Netflix. I'm excited. Are you? Let's take a look. ready. Watch Nine on Your Side News anywhere, anytime with Live Stream Nine. Welcome back, everybody, and welcome back to Shelby from the Humane Society of Eastern Carolina. We have a cute girl. She's already waving hello. Who do we, we have? We do. So <laughs> this is Rosalind. Um, she is a beautiful tabby with orange. She's got like a little pastel pumpkin color, and then she's got like cute. a darker. So she is a fall kitty. Absolutely. So if you love fall color, she definitely fits with the decor. Yes. Um, she has been in a foster home with dogs. She does great with cats, oh, kids. Great. 
everything. She's just really well-rounded. And at such a young age, too, Yeah, right? she's only five and a half months, oh and she's goodness. just beautiful. She is super cute. Lots of room to grow in a loving home, for sure. Well, if you're interested in checking out Rosalind or the other pets that Humane Society has up for adoption, make sure to visit hscarolina.org. Jerry does a good job. He lets you know when something is going to transpire. Um, I have the app on my phone and the radar on my phone. It helps me know when the storm is coming up. One moment I really appreciated it was when Hurricane Florence was about and the way Jerry really let you know what was going to happen. That was one moment that made my decision for us to leave town. Craven County, we hit, got hit bad. I just want to say y'all continue to do what you're doing. What I want you to know about me is that I care about you. I want to empower people to change what's possible for them. You have this pattern of trashing yourself. We're gonna break it today. If you change how you think, you will change your life. Welcome to the Mel Robbins Show. So what's it been like here? It's rough. Dina Palmieri has lived in her parents' basement, saving money for eight years. The preschool teacher was about to close on her first condominium last spring. So excited. It was, you know, everything was happening so fast. Two weeks before the move, she received an email she thought was her attorney, asking her to wire almost $11,000 for closing costs. It just popped up with your lawyer's name, not the email. Correct. And when I double clicked, that's when I was able to see the difference after I found out that these were fraudulent. She lost her money and the condo. Better Business Bureau investigator Steve Baker authored a new report highlighting the exploding number of similar real estate email scams. Reports of real estate fraud attempts rose 1100 percent between 2015 and 2017. 80 percent of businesses and other organizations have gotten one of these sorts of emails in the last year. Palmieri now has to start all over. It's evil and I, I don't like to think that there's evil in this world because I naturally see the good in people. No one knows how the hacker was able to find out the details of Dana's closing and start emailing her. The BBB's advice to consumers, use the telephone to confirm all money transactions and don't rely on email. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. Anti-gravity aerial yoga is taking working out to new heights. And locals from Greenville are helping expand on health and wellness. This form of yoga may seem a bit off the wall when it comes to exercise, but it has a fair amount of benefits for your health. During the activity, your entire body is tested as you balance in a hammock hanging from the ceiling. Despite the notorious hesitation from first timers, anti gravity aerial yoga instructor Anna Dixon explains why there has been a recent spike in participation. The anti gravity hammock. Uh, hammock, um, it helps to decompress the body. Um, it brings novelty of uh, uh, movement novelty, which is actually really nourishing to the nervous system. Um, and it decompresses the spine uh, and offers an antidote to the stress and compression of our lives. For more on anti-gravity aerial yoga and local transformative experiences, head over to WNCT.com under online originals. In Greenville, Kelsey O'Donnell, The East Daily Download.
season 15, the shooting of season 15, is going to be a long series of lasts and goodbyes. This is the real end. I say a, another chapter done, but it's really like a book done. It will not be disappointing. It'll be emotional, but it'll be... It'll be satisfying. In the time I've been on this show, I've always been so aware of how loved this show is and how much it means to people. That certainly made it like, oh wow, they care about us as people, not just like, get back to work. You know that you have a, a responsibility to put out the best show you can. A lot of fandoms die out when a show ends, but I think that Supernatural is a candidate for, for sticking around as a community and fandom, so as a family. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the East Daily Download. Thank you so much for joining us today. As always, we appreciate it. Uh, don't forget, Supernatural is on tonight. 15th season premiere and final season. Also, Legacies is on as well. And it is a National uh, Cake Decorating Day. And I'm just finishing up a little project here for the cast and crew of the show. Perfect. Okay. I just finished this beautiful beautiful cake. Look at that beautiful decoration right there. Well, we appreciate you being with us as always. Hope you have a great day. Don't forget WNCT.com under the e day. East Daily Download tab or Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter hashtag East Daily Download. Also, the mobile app has a uh, WNCT mobile app has a East Daily Download. And um, my cake is gone that I spent all that time decorating. So, I'm going to go and, I guess, make another one. Bye-bye. Friday, we hit the road for the next edition of the East Daily Download. Pick up your pencils. It's time for our next lesson in this week's installment of Let's Draw. We'll be live at Whirly Gig Stage for an interview and performance from Gene Galligan and Tiki. We'll wrap up our look at Cycle NC's Mountains to Coast trek that came through the East. And WNCT Nine on Your Side anchor Shayla Reeves will show us what she's making and let's craft. So join us on Friday for an all new The East Daily Download on Eastern North Carolina CW.